Good morning. It's April. So it's November 14th and this marks the day after the anniversary of my diagnosis with breast cancer one year ago yesterday. So this morning I celebrated by going for a six and a half mile run. Now you might say like why on earth would that be a form of celebration? Well, in almost a year, I'm going to do the New York City Marathon. And it'll be my second marathon, um, my first marathon in nine years, which is kind of a long time. But I'm really, really excited about it. And six and a half miles is about a quarter of a marathon, so I'm 25% there. And I did it to remind myself of the strength that I still have in me. In me. Now, you know, I still have a little bit of a, have a little bit of a burn from radiation. I'm not totally healed from that, but I'm done with treatment. I finished my treatment last week. So I'm going to a party to later today and I'm gonna do a little dance for you. Since I did an end of chemo dance, I feel like I, I owe my YouTube audience an end of radiotherapy dance. And frankly, I wanna dance. <laughs> I danced a little bit on my run today. I might have embarrassed myself on the crosswalk a few times, but that's okay. I deserved it. So I want to clarify something, and that is that I've, I've made this all look really easy. You know, I know that I have made it look like, you know, cancer can be easier to handle with eyeliner and a little lipstick. And I want to make sure that you know if someone you love is going through this, it's no joke. It really isn't. It's not a picnic. The five, the five minutes of optimism that you see here on YouTube um, might be the best five minutes of my day. And I record them and I put them up here so that I can look at them later and remind myself that, you know, whatever bad place I'm in, it's not going to last. And I'll get to a place where I can laugh and crack jokes and, you know, look in the mirror and amuse myself by putting on pink eyeliner or whatever. And those little things that you do, those little moments of optimism can carry you through the really hard parts. Um, I thank God every day for my sister and my friends who have been there when I have been, you know, crying and wanting to die and not, you know, not wanting to drag myself to chemo. I told a friend yesterday, I don't know if you've seen Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Um, I've listened to the audio tape. It's one of my favorite audio tapes. And I listened to it a lot when I was going through chemo just to pass the time. Because a lot of chemotherapy and post-chemotherapy, you are really just curled up in a ball trying not to throw up. And there's nothing to do except think about your stomach. So I would listen to audio tapes to help pass the time. Um, because I knew that after four days, or so, my nausea would break. And if I could just get through those four days, you know, 84 hours, I'd be okay. And you, you mark time in different ways when you're going through cancer. So in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, there's a scene where Dumbledore and Harry Potter have reached this island and there's this chalice full of potion that is hiding, you know, this thing that's gonna help kill Voldemort and this evil wizard, if you haven't seen Harry Potter. And they try to magic it away and it won't work and Dumbledore looks at Harry and he says, I'm gonna have to drink this potion and I want you to make me drink it no matter how much I protest, no matter what I say, don't let me stop drinking it until I get to the bottom and you can get what's at the bottom of this bowl. And I realized in the car the other day <laughs> Literally, I had just finished my last radiation treatment and I felt like home free. And I had a flashback to the, my last um, AC treatment, my, actually my third AC treatment. Um, I was just over halfway done and not even a quarter of the way done with all of my chemotherapy. But for the first drug, I was like, you know, going to my third treatment and I really didn't want to go. And I was crying in the car and I thought, oh my God, that's what that was like. It was like there was a part of me that was lying to me and forcing me to do something while the other part of me was crying and begging me not to make it. Begging me not 
don't make me do this, don't make me go into that room and put those drugs in my system again and spend, you know, five, six days curled up in a ball feeling like crap, don't make me do it. And I felt like that there was another part of me that was, that was like Harry that was saying, no, 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 this is the last time, this, you know, you just have to get through this and then you won't have to do it anymore. And I was literally lying to myself because I kept saying, you can quit anytime you want, just get through this one time. But the truth is, is that when you're going through cancer, you can't quit or you die. And, you know, or you at least take the chance that you could die. And if you change your mind, you'll, you'll wish that you did muscle through it. So, it's kind of a rambling way of saying, cancer really is no joke. It's not fun. It's horrible. It's a nightmare. If you ever see somebody, you know, with a port scar like this, it means that they've probably been through what I've been through. And, you know, cut them a little slack because it is not something I would wish on anyone. And um, that's it for today. I'm going to do a little dance later, make you a little video to entertain you. And uh, I'll see you next time. If you like this video, please rate and comment.